hello everyone welcome to the mercury virtual hope you are doing good uh, today i am going to continue with your chapter number 5 that is functions and pointers and this is the module that is a procedure programming i will continue uh, in the last class we have discussed about the functions different scenarios of the function that is why we are using the function what are the methods in which we call the functions uh, we have discussed so many things about the function and we have finished the function part. In the today's class, I am going to start with a new topic that is a pointers. So this is a chapter that contains functions as well as the pointers. So function part is finished already. Today, uh, I will try that pointers is also finished. So that chapter number 5 is finished today only. So uh, let's take a quick review what we have covered in the last class and then continue with the next topic that is a pointer or today's topic. So let's start with the uh, review, let's start with the function, let's start with the last session. In the last session we continue with the example. Uh, this is the example that is left in the day before yesterday class. Uh, that is, uh, there are the different functions like main function, Italy function, Brazil function, Argentina function. So different functions are available and we can use these functions to make them uh, reliable. So that uh, a main program is divided into multiple functions and the Multiple functions are also contained in another function. That is, one function can call another function. That is, Italy, Brazil, Argentina. That is, in uh, main, there is an Italy function that is called. In Brazil, uh, Brazil there is a Argentina and Italy, there is a Brazil. So, there are different uh, functions that is used in the one after the another function or one inside the another function. Then we have discussed about uh, uh, what is the main scenario or what is the crux of the C programming or what is the crux of the function. This is C program is a collection of one or more functions. That is every C program is a collection or is a uh, division of one or more functions. A function get when called, when the function uh, name is followed by a semicolon. That is when the function get called, uh, what is the scenario, what is the syntax when the function name is followed by a semicolon. Then we have discussed multiple rules. These are the multiple rules that a function can be called from any other function. A function can be called any number of times. That is, we can call any function at any number of time. It can call five times, three times, n number of times. This is the example. The order in which the programs functions are defined, the order in which they are get it, don't necessarily be the same. That is, it is not mandatory that the function definition which we have given is the same what we have defined the function. No. If I define the function message 1 before and we uh, give the explanation definition for message 2 first, then it's okay, <coughs> no issues. There is no hard and fast rule that uh, the uh, function definition is also in the same order, no. This is uh, one of the important uh, part that is a function can call itself. That is, a function can call itself, uh, that is a recursive function. This is known as recursion. Then next, a function can be called from other function, but a function cannot be defined in another function. There are two types of function basically. One is library, one is user defined that we have discussed. Uh, what is a library function? That contains the function that is common to everyone. Like you, me are the users. Uh, so we are using the same function like printf, scanf. And user defined functions are those functions which are defined by the user. For example, you define the function as a Virginia. I define the function as a India. So your function is different, my function is different. That are the user-defined functions. So this is the most important line. As name suggests, library functions are nothing but commonly required functions that are grouped together and stored in the what is known as library. Then we have discussed why we are using the functions. What is the main role? Uh, why we are using the function? That is the main crux. Or what are the reasons uh, of using the functions? Uh, first of all, there are two parts. There are two importance. There are two advantages of using the function. The first advantage is that it is time saving. Uh, we waste so many time, or we waste the so many time in uh, rewriting the same code again and again, over and over. So it's better to use same code again and again to the multiple users, to single user, to n number of users. Then. Uh, next point, uh, that is the next part, is that it is easier to write the programs uh, and keep track of what they are doing. That is, uh, when we are using the function, it is it be 
becomes easier to write these programs and keep track of what we are doing or what they are doing that is also the benefit of using the functions so what is the moral of the story don't try to cram the entire logic in one function it is very bad style instead break up program into small units and write the function for each of these isolated sub divisions don't hesitate to write the function that are called only once what is important is that these function perform some logically isolated task that is every pub function performs some isolated task that is used for performing the operations then uh, we have discussed about passing the values between the functions that is how to pass the values between different functions so there are multiple scenarios in which the values will be passed that is the argument will be passed one is known as actual argument one is known as formal argument so we have studied two terms one is actual one is formal actual arguments are the argument that is passed when we call the function that is when we give the semicolon that means we are giving the argument we are giving inside the parenthesis inside the bracket that is known as the actual argument and when the function definition is given at that time when we use another uh, functions another argument another variable that are known as actual argu uh, formal argument so when the function is called the, when semicolon is used when the variables are defined that are known as actual argument and in terms of definition when the function is defined uh, variables are used that is known as formal arguments so one is actual arguments one is formal arguments the mechanism that is used to convey information to the function is known as the argument as i told you there is a term that is known as the argument consider the following program in this program in main we receive the value of a b and c through the keyboard and then output the sum of a b and c however the calculation of sum is done in a different function that is known as the calsum this is a function that is used to define the uh, calculation of the sum is this if uh, sum is to be calculated in calsum and the values of a b and c are received in main then we pass on these values to the calsum and only calsum can calculate the sum and return from the calsum to the main function this is sending and receiving the values between the functions uh, this is the example that we have discussed i am repeating again the same example uh, here the variables are declared here we use the printf line for printing on the screen here we are using the scanf line for storing in the memory then calsum function is used that has a argument three arguments a b and c and then the output of this that is the function output is stored in the sum variable that is the sum then prints the value of sum this is the definition of the calsum Uh, there we are use uh, we have used a b c like a b c here we have used x y z so there is a difference between the actual argument and the formal argument that are totally different in actual we are using a b c in formal we are using x y z and there is a data type that is declared that is int x y z so either we can write over here only int x int y int z or first of all x y z and then declare the data type then use another function in use another variable that is d then uh, adding all the values that is x y z and then there is a return of d then there is a semicolon or curly brace close this is the example that we have discussed there are so many things that we note about the program that we have discussed what are the things uh, we have uh, learnt about that is we can declare the data type at the same time when we are using the function that is the main concern the variables are known as actual argument and uh, x y z are known as formal argument so one is actual one is formal there are two types of method of declaring the formal argument that is there are two types what are the types like this one if uh, i am declaring the variables and then there is a data type another method is, is at the same line in the same line there is a data type there is a variable there is a data type there is a variable that or this method is known as ansi method what is the full form of ansi that is american national standard institute that is the full form of ansi
this is the return statement that serves the purpose is uh, what is the purpose on executing the return statement it immediately transfers the control back to the calling program so uh, whenever a return is uh, fired or return is called then it, it immediately transfers the control back to the calling program or the calling function uh, another rule is that there is no restriction on the number of return statement that is we can return n number of statement at same time so there is no boundation of returning the statement Next point says, whenever the control returns from a functional or function, some values is definitely returned. That is, whenever a control is passed or control returns, then definitely some values are passed. These are the following valid return statement. Uh, first of all, return A, 23, 12.34. This returns the character, this returns the integer, this returns the real number, that is a float number. And this returns nothing, that is null. So these are all are the valid return statements. Then we have discussed about how when we call the function that does not return any value, we use the void. That is the data type or the yeah data type that is used uh, whenever we don't want to return any values, we can use the void display. That is the data type is used as a void or the null. A function can return only one value at a time. This is the most important point. If the value of a, a formal argument is changed in the called function, that is, if I'm using the or I'm changing the formal argument uh, in the called function. Called function means in the definition of the function, the corresponding change does not takes place in the calling function. That is, uh, there is change in the definition only, but there is no change in the function calling. That is, in function code, if the arguments are changed, that does not impact on the actual argument or uh, calling function then next is scope rule of the function that is what are the scope rule that is available for the functions uh, what is the scope rule that is uh, what is the scope uh, if the function is defined within a block that is it is uh, limited to that block only that is the scope of the program then uh, we have also discussed about the calling convention that is uh, how a function will be called that is a calling convention uh, whenever we call the function the argument might be passed from the left to right or right to left the concern is that it is always passed or the argument must be passed or might be passed from the right to the left so in this scenario first of all the right one is executed the next one then next one so uh, these are the scenarios or arguments are passed from the right to the left then we have discussed about the dice issue. What is the dice issue that we have discussed? Then we have discussed about the advanced feature of the functions. That is function declaration, prototype. We have discussed about the function uh, declaration. What is function declaration? That is declaring the uh, functions as well as their prototype. Prototype means arguments. Uh, this is the example. That is m percent a. That uh, next is we are uh, calling the function that is square a that is stored output in b. So this is the definition of the square. Uh, this is the example that we have discussed square function float float. This is also one of the example. Then at last we have discussed about the next part that is the most important part that is call by value and call by reference. This is one of the important part that we are using that how uh, call by value and call by uh, uh, reference will be used. So whenever we use call by value the functions or the argument which are passed to the formal argument there is no relationship between them means if there is a change in the formal argument that does not impact on the actual argument understand but if we are using the call by reference that is we are using the reference means the memory address so in this case if the formal argument are changed then automatically that change will be reflected in the actual arguments I am repeating again when we use call by value uh, you understand why I am focusing so much pressure on this topic because this is one of the important and the most important topic interesting important as well as the easy 
in cone by value if the arguments are passed that is actual argument are passed and in the formal argument that is in the cold function there is any change in the values then there is no impact on the actual argument that is there is no impact on the calling function but on the other hand if we use call by reference that is passing the address instead of the value then any change that is made in the formal argument might or must be reflected in the actual argument that is it change the values in the actual arguments also that is if any change in the formal argument that does uh, that reflects in the actual arguments also because we are passing the reference not the values okay now let's start to the next topic that is the pointers that is the most important topic uh, as well as a tough topic not i'm saying easy topic this is the tough topic but most interesting most most uh, secu securing um, everything is pointer that is if you learn pointer you learned half of the c that is a pointer right so let's start this says which feature of c do beginner might more difficult to understand as i told you the answer is easy pointer that is more difficult to understand for the beginner level not for the a uh, high proficient programmer but at the beginning pointers is very difficult topic other languages have pointer but few use them so frequently as c does that is other programming language also contains the concept that is a pointer but most of the person avoid the pointer because there is some limitations on there is some difficulty level there is a um, logic behind this that uh, most of the persons are not very good in programming generally if I, we talk about the beginner so it is very difficult for the beginners to use the or use the pointers in the and why not why uh, other languages uh, do not use the pointer only c mostly focus on pointer it is clever use of pointer that makes it's the excellent language it is that is it is a pointer concept only that makes the c as a uh, basic language c as the first language c as the mother of all the languages the difficulty beginners have with pointers has much to do with c's pointer terminology then the actual concept that is the what is the difficulty that is a difficulty that the beginners have with pointers has much to do uh, with c's pointer terminology than the actual concept that is the c term, uh, pointer concept is very easy than the actual concept for example when a c programmer says that a certain variable is a pointer suppose uh, in c if i say a variable is a pointer what does that mean it is hard to see how a variable can point to something or in some direction it is hard to get a grip on pointer just by listening to programmer jargon in our discussion of c pointer therefore we will be try to avoid this difficulty by explaining pointer in terms of programming concept we already understand so it is better to use the uh, c pointer notation or the c pointer in a easiest term next is for pointer notation that is how to notate the this is the example this is the consider the declaration what is the declaration that is int i equals to 3 this is the declaration that is used that is uh, i is a variable that is of integer type that has a value 3 this declaration tells the c compiler what is the declaration or what is this declaration that tells the compiler first of all it reserves the space in memory to hold the integer value that is it reserves the space in the memory uh, what it means uh, int i that is i takes the space in the memory that is reserve the space in the memory to hold the integer value why integer value because it is declaring the integer data type that is the integer value then associate the name i with this memory location that is first of all uh, vacant the space for the variable then associate the name that is provide the name i what is the variable name that is i with this memory location then store the value 3 at this location then store the value of this 3 at this location so first of all a memory will be occupied memory will be vacant the name of the memory will be given as the variable name and then input or the output will be stored as a 3 in the memory that is vacant or that is apply for the variable 
so these are the three concepts first of all memory will be available then associate the name provides the name store the value 3 at this location we may represent a ith location in memory by the following memory map this is the example this is the location name this is the value at location this is the uh, location at which it will be stored then this is the value and this is the location number that is the memory address uh, that is given by the uh, computer on by on that is by default that is a 65524 this is the example we see that the computer has selected memory location that is 65526 as the place to store the value 3 the memory location or the location number that is 65524 is not a number to be relied on because some other time the computer may choose a different location for storing the value 3 that is there no f hard and fast rule that uh, you are mugging up that 65524 is the location for the i location for the 3 no uh, it depends on the computer to the computer it depends on the memory address but it gives the memory address that is any address that is vacant or that is available that is given by the computer in the memory the important point is that i's address that is i address in memory uh, is a number that is if you that is the i address that is given in the uh, uh, memory is a number that is it gives the number as a 3 then we can print this address number through the following program this is the example that is given we can print the address of this program uh, that is we can print the address uh, that is uh, uh, what is the location or what is the address on which the 3 will be stored so this is the example that shows how the address will be printed first of all a main function will be used starting with the main function then uses int i equals to 3 that is uh, declaring the variable as i that has a data type int and that stores the value 3 right then printf address of i equals to percentage u this is the most important part till now we have discussed percentage d percentage uh, f uh, percentage i now this is a concept when we are using the address that is when we print the address then use the specifier that is percentage u this is the most important part so address of i equals to percentage d and then use the m percent because whenever we uh, want to display the uh, address that can be represented or that must be represented by using the ampersand so this is the ampersand that is used that is ampersand i then in the next line there is a printf that is value of i equals to percentage d now the value of i will be printed that will be printed normally by using the value of i as a percentage d that is the i so these are the two lines that is very important so in simple terms whenever we have to print the address of any variable that can be printed by using the specifier that is percentage u and whenever we have to print the value that will be uh, provided by using the specifier percentage d and uh, for the address we also use the m percent for along with the variable name next uh, this is the output that is address of i equals to 65524 and value of i equals to 3 that is address is uh, this one and value of this one let us take the first printf statement carefully m percent is used in this statement is c address of operator that is m percent is known as the address of operator i am saying m percent th this operator uh, that is the m percent name but that operator name is address of operator so this is the operator that is used the expression this one that is uh, address of i returns the address of the variable i which in this case happens to be 65524 so this is the example this happens to be 65524 since 65524 represents an address there is no question of sign being associated with it that is there is no uh, there is no role of the sign that is either it may be plus either may be negative hence it is printed using the percentage u that is the unsigned integer which is, which is the format specifier for printing an unsigned integer we have been using the ampersand operator all the time in the scanf statement 
the other pointer variable that is used is the value at address operator so one is address of operator that is used that is represented by the ampersand next operator that is used is the asterisk that is a star sign that is known as value at address operator it gives the value stored at a particular uh, address that is uh, first of all the address operator that is ampersand is used that is address of operator is used to print the address but the asterisk that is a star is used to print the value at the address operator that is the uh, asterisk that is the star that is used this is also known as the indirection operator so in pointer generally two operators are used one is address of operator and one is value at address operator and the value at address operator is also known as the uh, is also known as the indirection operator observe carefully the output of the following program this is another program this is int i equals to 3 the same the same concept is used that is address of i equals to m percent i that is using the address of operator then value of i i then value of i again we are using the value of i by using the concept of pointer and then there is m percent i uh, then the output is address is same value is same value is same. this is the most important line note that printing the value of this bracket this that is we when we are using the address of operator uh, this is the address of operator and the next one asterisk is the value at address operator that is when we are using both the operators at the same time that is asterisk that is the value at address operator and the uh, address of operator then it is the same as printing the value of i so if i want to print the value then simply print i but if we are using the operator then use the both the operator because both the operators are complementary to each other that is they cross with each other so we get the output that is the value of the variable so in simple terms if we want to print the value either use simple variable that is i for example or either use both the operator in combination that is m percent uh, that is a value at address operator and the uh, address of operator the expression m percent i gives the address of the variable i the address can be collected in a variable by saying this one but remember that j is uh, not an ordinary variable like any other integer it is a variable that contains the address of other variable that is i so this is the a variable that stores the address of another variable what is another variable that is i so this is not the uh, simple variable this is the different variable that is used because it stores the address of another variable since j is a variable the compiler must provide its space in the memory since j is a variable although it stores the address address but it gives the or it takes the space in the memory or the compiler provides the space in the memory once again, the following memory map would illustrate the content of i and j. First of all, there is a variable i that has a value 3 that has an address this one. This address will be stored uh, or this address is stored by the another variable that has a j. So j contains the address of the i and j also has some another address that is this one 65522. This is the example that shows that i is a variable name, 3 is the value of i that is stored in the i. This is the address that is given by the compiler. In the same way, j is a variable that stores the address of the i that is stores the address the same. And then it also has a uh, memory address that is given by the compiler. As you see, i values is 3 and the j values is i's address. But wait we can't j, uh, use j in a program without declaring since j is a variable that defines the uh, address of i so it is declared as this one so this is a concept that shows whenever we declare the variable that stores the address that is uh, the, uh, any any variable that stores the address of another variable that is declared like this one that is declared with the use of asterisk with the use of pointer with the use of a star that is in pointer j because j stores the address of another variable that is i this declaration tells the compiler that j will be used 
to store the address of an integer value. This is the most important line that is uh, this declaration if I use this one this tells the compiler this tells the compiler this say the compiler that J will be used to store the address of an integer value in other words J points to an integer how do we justify the usage of asterisk in the declaration that is how we justify the address or usage of the asterisk in the declaration let us go by the meaning of asterisk that is LU at address operator therefore in pointer j would mean then the value at address or uh, the value at the address contained in j is an int this is the meaning that is the value of the address that is contained in the j is of integer type here is a program that demonstrate or illustrate the relationship between that we have discussed this is i equals to 3 this is of integer type then pointer j that is j is a pointer that stores the integer value please listen carefully j is a variable that stores the address of some integer type that is the int pointer j then uses j equals to ampersand i that is j will be used to store the address of i why i am using address because it is using the uh, address at operator or the address of operator that is the uh, ampersand so it is storing the address of i that is j then print what is the printf first of all that is the ampersand i that is the address of the i so i has the address for example this is the address of i the same example then again the address of i is j Be uh, why it is using j because this is the j that stores the address of the i so this is the same concept ampersand i that is stored by the j that is j then address of j now it is uh, time to represent the address of j that is using the same percentage u then m percent j in the same way i am using percentage i for uh, uh, for printing the address of j in the uh, address of i in the same way we can print the address of j by using the m percent j then next uh, this is the address of i and the j next printing the value of j first of all if i print the value of j that is simply represented by using of j value of i simply represented by i if i want to represent the value of i by using the operators remember what i say if we want to uh, display the address uh, value then we use the both the operator that is the this is the value at address operator and this is the address of operator so combine these operator they cross each other and the value that is represented is the i next again if i want to print the value of i use pointer j why we are using the pointer j because j contains ampersand i right so if i uh, divide this into two parts one is star one is j so star is one part j is one part j contains ampersand i so this is the same concept the same scenario will apply in this line star will be different and the j is the percentage i so this will be close with each other cancel with each other and at last the value is printed is i so this is another way that we we'll use to print the values of i to print the values of j to print the address of i to print the address of j the output of the above program would be what is the output this one this is the output address of j value of j uh, value of i i i this says work through the above program carefully taking help of the memory locations of i and j shown earlier this program summarizes everything that we have discussed so far if you don't understand the program output or the meaning of m percent i m percent j j and this one reread the last few pages everything we say about c pointer from here onwards will depend on the understanding these expressions carefully so uh, this is the basic of the pointers in the uh, uh, leading pages there are too many difficulties of the pointer so if do you have knowledge of these points or the earlier point then you get the concept whole concept uh, first of all there is a uh, this is the declaration 
in this there is alpha ch and the s are declared as a pointer variable so these three are declared as a pointer variable that is a variable capable of holding the address uh, how i recognize that uh, this is of the variable or these are the variable that show, stores the address because asterisk is used so this is for sure these are the pointer variable remember that addresses that is location number are always going to be whole number therefore pointers always contain the whole number now we can put these two uh, fact together and say pointers are variable that contains address and since address are always whole number pointer would always contain the whole number so this is the scenario that is pointers are the variable that contains the address or that stores the address and address always contains the whole number so pointer indirectly contains the whole number right the declaration float pointer s does not mean that s is going to contain a floating point number no what it mean s is going to contain the address of a floating point number if i'm uh, simply use float s then it is the same meaning it is used for storing the value that is of float type but i'm using float pointer s then it stores the address or it stores the address of a floating point value similarly if we am using char pointer ch that means ch is going to contain the address of a char value on the other hand uh, the value at address is going to be char the concept of pointer can be further extended pointer we know uh, is a variable so the concept is further extended this is the example this is the definition it is a variable that is pointer is a variable that stores or that contains the address of another variable this is the one line definition this is the basic definition if you uh, tell anyone that pointer is a variable that stores or that contains the address of another variable that person or that person understand that yeah you have a knowledge of the pointer that is a important definition what is a pointer that is a pointer is a variable that stores the address of another variable now this variable itself might be another pointer thus we know or we now have a pointer that contains another pointer address the example should make the concept easier this is the concept that is used This is the example. The same example. Uh, int i equals to three pointer j pointer pointer k. This example shows uh, different addresses that is used in the pointers. How different addresses will be represented. So first of all, uh, starting with the main function, one variable is declared that is of integer type that is three. One pointer is very uh, declared that is also of integer type that stores the address of integer type. Next, pointer pointer k. This is a double pointer. Double star is used. That is one pointer is storing the address of another pointer. That is uh, one address is stored in another address. Till now we discussed one variable is used to store the another address. Now one pointer is going to store the another address, another pointer. Then uses this expression that is j equals to percentage i that is j is used to store the address of i in the same way k is used to store the address of j now printf use the different printf statements first printf statement says percentage u m percent i that is uses the percentage i that is stores the address of i that is percentage i so the, what does this mean uh, this is the address or this is the address of the i for example this one then next address of i is also represented by using j because j contains again address i can also be represented by using the pointer k if i divide this into two parts star is one thing and pointer j is one thing if i use this one that is pointer j so star pointer j or star pointer i that is the value that is used to represent or that is used to 
uh, gives the value that is the pointer j then address of j this is m percent j that is used that is stores the address in the same way k in the same way m percent k that is the address of a that is the m percent k then values of j how value of j will be is, uh, printed if simply give j value of k simply print k value of i simply print i or value of i will also be represented by using the concept of pointer and this one percentage i and the same concept this asterisk that is the value at address operator and this is address of operator will cancel with each other and only the i value will be printed next concept is pointer j why pointer j because it is cancelling the concept it is cancelling the with each other then pointer pointer k why pointer pointer k because k stores the address of j and the j stores the address of i so if i am using pointer pointer first of all this will be used then this will be used and there are two star so two star will be cancelled with two m percent sign these are the m percent so the, it gives the output that is the this is the three 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 figure 4.5 or 5.3 help you in uh, tracing out what the program will print remember that when you run this program the addresses that uh, get printed might turn out to be something different from than the ones shown in the figure however with these addresses too the relationship between i j and k can be easily established that is the relationship be established between the i and the j and the k variables this is the example that is the figure 5.3 that is observed uh, this is observed that the variable j and k have been declared first of all i has a value 3 that has a address or that has a location that is 65524 then j that contains the address of i so this is the address of i that is stored in the j and then uh, it has a different address now k k stores the address of j and that have a different address so these addresses are different and this value is different but this stores the address of i this stores the address of j observe that the variable j are declared at this one this is only the variable this is the j that stores the address of i this stores the address of j here i is an ordinary int that is i is simply an int j is a pointer that points to an integer that points to an int often known as integer pointer whereas k is a pointer to an integer pointer that is k is also a pointer that points to the integer pointer we can extend the above program still further by creating a pointer to pointer to an integer pointer that is one pointer is used to store the address of another pointer in principle you would agree that likewise there could exist a pointer to pointer to a pointer to a pointer to a pointer that is we can use any number of pointers and we can store n number of pointers within the pointer there is no limit on how far can we go on extending this definition possibly till this point or till the point we can comprehend it and that form of comprehension is usually a pointer to but just in case now let's see another that is back to the function call that is uh, this pointer concept is used whenever uh, when we are using the functions that is called by value and called by reference now this says come back to the topic or come back to the next part come back to the previous part that is a back to the function calls uh, so that is a basic concept of pointer that is used uh, how pointer will be used the first concept is that it stores the address of another variable next concept is that we can uh, store the pointer address within the another pointer address that is one pointer will be used to store the address of another pointer now come back to the next come back to the last uh, previous part that is back to the function calls this says having had the first tires with pointers let us now come back to the or back to the what we have originally set out to learn that is two types of function call that is called by value and called by reference argument can generally be passed to a function in one of the two ways so 
that is argument will be passed by using the call by value that is sending the values by sending the addresses that is call by reference in the first method the value of each of the actual argument the value of each of the actual argument means actual argument must be passed in the calling function is copied into the corresponding formal argument of the called function that is the actual argument is just the photocopy of the uh, formal argument or uh, formal argument are just the photocopy of the actual argument with this method the changes made to the formal argument in the called function has no effect on the values of the actual argument in the calling function that is when with this method with this method means when we are using the call by value any change that is made to the formal argument in the called function makes no impact makes no effect on the values of the actual argument that is used in the calling function that is there is no impact there is no role there is no uh, role in the calling function that is using the formal argument that makes a no impact on the or no effect on the values of actual argument that is used in the calling function the following program illustrates the call by value this is the program that is used this is the main program first of all int a equals to 10 b equals to 20 that is two variables are used one is uh, a one is b a stores the value 10 b stores the value 20 then uh, uses the function that is swap v a b that is uh, use the function what is the function name that is swap v then uses the argument what are the argument that is using uh, that is a and b that is it passes two argument what are the two argument that is a and the b then print the value of a and the b a equals to percentage d b equals to percentage d so it gives the value it stores the value uh, it display the value of both a and b a has a value uh, integer type a b is also of integer type so that's why it is using percentage d percentage that is a and b and this curly brace will be open this curly brace will be closed so this is the scenario now this is the actual argument that is using now give the definition of this one that is the definition of the function that is a swap b uh, these are the actual argument in the same way these are the formal argument what are the formal argument that is x and the y that is of integer type that stores the value of integer this is in t that is new variable will be declared that is t temp variable then uh, give the or store the value of x in the t store the value of y into x store the value of t into y it means interchanging the values of x and y that is a and b now a become 20 b come become 10 so this is the example that shows the swapping swapping means uh, transferring the values from the x to the y and y to the how this will be done by using the third variable that is x uh, that is t so first of all put the value of x into the t put the value of y into the x and then put the value of t that is the next variable third variable that is used only for swapping into the y so first of all t equals to x x equals to y y equals to t then print the value of x and the y now if i use this function the output will be uh, shown over here only now as per your opinion what is the output uh, this is uh, a and b now a become 20 b become 10 means value will be changed so according to you either the values are change or not or the same values because this is called by value that is the actual argument are copied to the formal argument so the values is not change why it is not change the values is same here only the values is change x become 20 y become 10 but here in this line the values are same because i told you when we use call by value function that any change made in the formal argument does not impact on the actual argument this is the main concern this is the main crux that is if we use the call by value then any change made in the uh, formal argument does not impact on the actual argument this is the example in this it changes the value so now according to the rule it is changed to the i equals to 20 b equals to 10 no but it's not there why it is only to this 
block only not to this one so in this the x is 20 the y is 10 but in this a is 10 b equals to 20 so this is the output note that the values of a and b remain unchanged even after exchanging the values of x and y this is called by values on the other hand in call by reference any change made in the formal argument must be reflected into the actual argument that is if there is any change in the formal argument that must be reflected to the actual argument that is the second method this is in the second method that is called by reference the addresses of actual argument in the calling function are copied to the formal argument that is instead of passing the values now we are passing the addresses that's why it is known as call by reference that means this means that using these addresses we would have an access to the actual argument and hence we would be able to manipulate them that is or this is the meaning that how or, or this is the meaning that when we use these addresses when we are using these addresses we would have an access to the actual argument and hence we would be able to manipulate them the following program illustrate this fact that is when we are uh, passing the addresses then any change made in the formal argument must be reflected to the actual argument this is the example this is the main function that is used this is int a equals to 10 b equals to 20 that is the 10 will be stored into the a and the 20 will be stored into the b then use the swap function instead of like this one instead of passing the values that is a and b in this example we are passing the addresses so how to address the pass uh, how to pass the address by using the address of operator this is the address of operator so this is used to pass the address this is used to pass the address right uh, then uh, printf a and b so now when this will be encountered this function will be encountered cursor directly moves to this part that is this part now use this swap r then int pointer x that is using the next variable using the formal argument that is x and the y but here as you see this is, these are the addresses in the same way this is also the address this is also pointer that is used the same way a new variable is used for swapping the value that is t now t will be used to store the pointer of x that is the address of x then the address of y will be stored in the x and the uh, t value will be stored in the y now the x now uh, the x has a value 20 and the a has a value 10 the value will be swapped so this value will not be printed the output of the above program would be that is the output here like in this one the value will be printed over here but in this there is no value that is printed so after returning from or after uh, ex examining the closing curly brace the cursor moves back to this point so here now the a value has uh, a 20 and the b value has a 10 now uses the printf a and b so when we use pointer or uh, when we use printf a and b now the a value is 20 and the b value is 10 why a value is 20 because it is now fixed why because we are uh, treating on a, or we are passing the references not the values and when we pass the references so any change made in the formal argument must be reflected to the actual argument so here the value will be changed in the formal argument in the call function this automatically pass to the main function and then use that value only in the next line note that this program managed to exchange the value of a and b using their addresses that is stored in x and y usually in c programming we make a call by value means in general we use the call by value method this means that in general you cannot alter the actual argument but if desired you can achieve through a call by reference that is in general we are using the actual argument but sometimes we are using the call by reference method usually a call by reference intelligently 
uh, using a call by val uh, reference intelligently we can make a function return more than one value at a time which is not possible in an ordinary case this is the next example that you have to study by your own and please ask me the doubt if there is any doubt then please ask immediately from me so these are the conclusion of this one uh, now in the break time i am giving break after 2 minutes so in the break time please uh, read out this example and if there is any doubt then please ask from me in the break only right this point says thus we have been able to indirectly return two values from a function called and limitation of return statement which can return only one value from a function at a time now what is the conclusion conclusion of the function that we are using from the programs that we have discussed we have drawn the following conclusion what are the conclusion if we want that the value of an actual argument should not get changed in the function being called pass the actual argument by value that is if we want that the there is a value that does not change in the actual argument then always pass the function or pass the argument as a value not by the reference that is pointer will not be used simply use the uh, values next point says if we want that the value of actual argument should get changed that is it must change then use the pass by uh, call by reference that is pass the actual argument by reference that is uses the m percent operator last point says if a function is to be made to return more than one value at a time that is if the function is used or uh, return more than one value then return these values indirectly by using the call by reference that is if a function return more than one value then the use the call by reference method that is indirectly calling the function now next is the recursion but before this let's take a break come back and then starting with the next topic that is the recursion remember what is a recursion that is when a function call itself that is a recursion so let's take a break come back starting with the recursion in the meantime if you have a time then please read out this uh, example and if you have any doubt then please ask from me so let's take a 5 to 10 minutes break now let's start with the next topic come back uh, come back from the break now let's start uh, with the next topic that is a recursion so this is our next topic that is the today's topic or the last topic or the uh, let's see this is the last topic or the second last topic that is a recursion this says in c it is possible for the functions to call themselves that is it is uh, also uh, pro it uh, or the function provides a facility that the or c provides a facility that the function can call itself or can call themselves that is a recursion a function is known as recursive if a statement within the body of a function calls the same function again and again that is uh, when whenever we say a function is a recursive function that is a statement that is a statement that is given within the body of a function calls the same function that is a function call itself that is a function uh, or the statement that is given within the body of a function that is the definition of the function is the same or calls the same function sometimes known as the circular definition recursor uh, recursion is thus a process of defining something in terms of itself that is whenever we define something in terms of itself that is known as the recursion let us now see a simple example of recursion suppose we want to calculate the factorial of an integer now what is a factorial if I want to find the factorial of a 5 then we have to calculate 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 suppose uh, if I have to find the factorial of a 7 then the output is 7 into 6 into 5 into 3 uh, sorry 7 into 6 into 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 that is the factorial of 7 so factorial means starting the values going down and multiply each value till the value of 1 in the same way 3 factorial is 3 into 2 into 1 5 factorial is 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 that is the factorial as we know factorial of a number is the product of all the integers 
between one and that number that is any uh, factorial is the number of product or, or the number or is the product of all the integers that start from the zero and ending with that number only for example 4 factorial is 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 that is a 4 factorial this can also be expressed by using this one so the factorial is also uh, represented by this expression that is 4 this is the expression this is 4 into 3 uh, factorial this is also used this this stands for the factorial therefore the factorial of a number can be expressed in form of itself that is factorial can be expressed in form of itself hence this can be programmed using recursion that is this can be programmed this can be used using the recursion however before we trying to write a recursive function for calculating factorial let us take a look at the non-recursive function for calculating the factorial value of an integer. So now let's take a non-recursive function that is not a recursive function for calculating the factorial value of an integer. So this is a function. First of all, there is a function. This that is not this is not a recursive function. So this is a simple example for finding the factorial. This is the main function that is used there are two variables that is of integer type that is used that is the a and the fact fact means factorial so two variables are defined of the integer type then uh, uses the line what is the line print as any number that is it is asking from the user that the user enter any number then use the scanf why use the scanf because it is going to store in the memory that is m percent a that is the scanf m percent a then uh, uses next in the next line uses the function what is the function name that is factorial a this is the function name and the output of this factorial function is stored in the variable that is a fact so output of this is stored in the variable that is a fact then uses the printf uh, uses the printf to store the value or to display the value that is stored in the fact so this is and then cur curly braces will be closed this is the uh, example that shows how main function will be used so first of all two variables are declared that is a and the fact then uh, ask from the user store in the memory then uses the uh, factorial function and that output of this function will be stored in the fact then at last print the value of the variable that is fact whenever this line will be encountered that is the function uh, calling will be encountered so this moves the cursor to this part so this moves the cursor to this one this part that is factorial int x so instead of a it is using the a a x so this is actual argument that is a is the actual argument and x is the formal argument so there are two argument that is used that is a and the x so a is the actual argument x is the formal argument then uses the variable what is the variable name another variable that is f uh, that is one and another variable that is declared is i so two new variable are declared that is f and the i and f is initialized to the one then uses the for loop this is the for loop as i uh, told you that this, this is a loop that is used first is initialization then condition then increment or decrement so this is used that is for i equals to x what is the x x as a value or uh, x as a value that is given by the user that is the int x that is the a this is the a in the same way x that is given by the user so a is the value that is given by the user that is take place by the i so this is the declare uh, initialization then this is the condition what is the condition it stop over there when the i is one it means it turns when the i is one or more than one it does not uh, work when the or it stops when the i is less than one so this is a condition this means that the loop will execute till i is greater than or equals to one then there is a i minus minus that is decrementing the values of i one by one then uses f equals to f into i that is f equals to f into i this is a condition that is used that is uh, stores the or uh, takes the output or takes the variable as a f and stores them in a f into i that is store the value of f into i in the variable that is f and then return the value or return the variable that is f and then curly braces will be closed 
So this is the uh, example that shows how factorial will be done. Now let's see the dry run. For example, suppose uh, user gives the value 4. So this is 4, this is 4. Here when we call, uh, when the program calls a function, this factorial passes the cursor to this one. Now x become 4, right? This is a formal argument. Now f equals to 1, that is i. Now i equals to 4, that is i has a value 4 because the example what I said is the uh, user inputs the value, inputs the number as a 4 this works till or until i is less uh, greater than or equals to 1 that is it works for 1 it works for fo 2 it works for 3 and it works for 4 that is 4 3 2 1 then i minus minus that is one time it is 4 then 3 then 2 then 1 right so now first condition i equals to 4 4 now let's see 4 is greater than or equals to 1 yeah 4 is greater than 1 then uses f that is store the output what is the f first of all f is 1 i is 4 so 4 into uh, 1 is 4 so uh, store the output that is 4 is stored in the variable f then returns the f right again the cursor again moves to this part again moves to this part now i become 3 why i become 3 because this is i minus minus so i become 3 again check the condition 3 is greater than or equals to 1 yeah 3 is greater than 1 then again uh, calculate this one now f is 4 because earlier the f value is 4 and that is a case and this is the loop that is executing because the condition is not 4 so now f has a value 4 so now calculate 4 into i what is the i value that is 3 so what is the output now 4 into 3 is 12 I am repeating again f has a value 4 because in the previous step we are calculating the value of f as a 4 now i has a value 3 because this will be decremented so now the output of f is 4 into 3 that is a 12 so the new value of f is 12 right next in the next stage uh, in the next stage i has a value 2 why i is a value 2 because this will be decremented now 3 becomes 2 that is i has a value 2 now again check the condition 2 is greater than or equals to 1 yeah 2 is greater than 1 then again going to this one now f has a value 12 now calculate 12 into 2 that is 24 20 will be 4 will be stored in the f again going to uh, upper part now i become 1 1 is greater than or equals to 1 this is equals to now condition is again true then uses this is 24 as I told you 24 into 1 that is 24 now f become 24 again go to this one now i become 0 why 0 because i minus minus it becomes 0 this check the condition 0 is greater than or equals to 1 no condition is true true so the loop will terminate and the f value has a 24 this will be returned by using this statement now the f value that is returned is 24 now this 24 will be returned to this one and store in the fact variable this fact variable or this fact uh, value will be printed as a uh, by using the printf statement that is a fact so this is the way how we enter the or how we use the uh, or how we calculate the factorial now this is the example enter any number that is 3 the factorial is 6 why 6 because 3 into 2 is 6 work through the above program carefully till you understand the logic of the program properly means you understand the logic of the program that is how it will terminate how initialization is take, taken place how condition is taken place how initial uh, increment or decrement is taken place now recursive factorial function can be understood only if we have a thorough with the above logic now let's talk about the recursive function uh, you are able to understand recursive function only and only if you have a knowledge of the previous function previous example that we have discussed following is the recursive version of the function to calculate the factorial value this is the 
uh, recursive function to calculate the factorial value. This is the main function that is used. These are the two variables the same way. This is the recursive function that is the RAC A. This is the function name that is the recursive and the output is stored in the fact. Now, this is the definition of the recursion function. Uses the uh, formal argument as a x that has a a value, then uses the int f that is uh, using the variable that is a f, then uses if x equal equals to 1, that is check the condition. If it is equals to 1, then simply return 1. Otherwise, else return f equals to x into rec, uh, rec x minus 1, that is uses the uh, variable that is the x that is multiplied by the rec that is a recursion function and x minus 1 will be used and then return the f bar. So for example user enter the value is 1, uh, 2 right so here this is a 2 when it is 2 then uh, check the condition 2 is equals to 1 no this is not uh, correct then goes to the next part that is factorial 2 into rec 2 minus 1 that is 2 into rec uh, 2 minus 1 that is 1 whenever we use the rec 1 the 2 into 1 is 2 so the output is 2 so this is the factorial that is 2 in the same way 3 that are factorial 6 5 that are factorial 120 so these are the condition that is used or uh, that is used in this function that is using or calculating the factorial let us understand this recursive factorial function thoroughly in the first run, when the number entered through scanf is 1, let us see what action does rec take. The value of a, that is 1, is copied to into the x. As I told you, the value of a, that is a, is copied to the, this a is copied to the x part. Right. The value of a is copied to the x, since the x turns out to be 1. The condition is that if x equals to 1, this is the condition, if x equals to 1, your condition is 2, simply return the 1. So in case of 1, it simply returns the 1 and return through the return statement. That is returned after the return statement because this is true, then return. Next, when the number entered through scanf is 2, that is, this is a scenario, now the number entered is 2, not 1. Check the condition, this is a condition that is not correct, so reaches to the next part, that is a else part, that is reaches to this part, right. And here, where we meet the recursion, how do we handle the expression? We simply x or multiply x by the recursion x minus 1. Since the current value of x is 2, this is the value that is a 2, it is the same as saying that we must calculate the value of 2 into rec 1. This is the example because 2 into rec 2 minus 1 that is 1. We know that the value returned by the rec 1 is 1 because it is already returned that is 1. So the expression reduces to the 2 into 1. So simply 2. Therefore the statement this one evaluates to 2 which is stored in the variable f and then returned to the main function which is with it is duly printed as the factorial value equals to c. Now for f, you can see what could happen with the value of a is 3, 4, 5 and so on. In case the value of a is 5, the main function will call the recurve, recurve function that is REC function with 5 at its actual argument and the recursion function will send back the computed result. This means if the input is 5, the 5 will be sent, 5 will be sent from a and that will be captured by this one and that will be uh, used as the x that is a a or that is a 5 but before sending the computed value or uh, before send the uh, output that is computed value that is REC calls REC and wait for a value to be returned it is possible for the REC that has been just been uh, called to yet another REC the argument x being re decreased by 1 for each of these recursive calls this is a recursion function that is used that is called by themselves. That is a recursion function. Uh, 
there are different invocation of the recursion there are different parts of the recursion invocation of rec recursion to display the output this is a recursion 5 returns 5 times recursion 4 which returns 4 times recursion 3 3 times recursion 2 2 times recursion 1 that is 1 1 1 1 that is returns the 1 this is a scenario that is how recursion function is used that is using the recursion function that is used one is simple number then uh, number minus one that is for example five that is five into five minus one that is four so that is twenty well this is a uh, that is a recursion for you in the simplest graphs i hope you agree that it, it is difficult to visualize how control passes from one co function to another function figure 5.4 makes a bit clear concept this is the figure 5.4 from main this is recursion int a x int f x equals to 1 return 1 this is the next example return f in the same way return uh, rec int x uses this one and return this one so this moves the cursor to this one this moves the cursor to this one this moves the cursor to again this one so this is the scenario how recursion function will be used next point says recursion may seem strange and the complicated at the first glance but it is often the most direct way to code an algorithm and once you are familiar with recursion the clearest way of doing so that is if you have an understanding of the recursion thoroughly then it is better to use a recursion function because in every programming there is a concept that we can use again and again the same function it is better to use the recursion function again and again next recursion and the stack that is how recursion and the stack will be used there are different ways in which data can be organized for example if you are to store or if you have to store five number that we can store them in five different variable like array linked list binary tree etc all these different way of organizing the data are known as the data structure that is these are the different ways that is used to organize the data that is known as the data structure the compiler uses one such data structure that is known as such uh, stack for implementing normal as well as a recursive function code. So this paragraph says a stack will be used to compile or stack is a data structure that is used for the implementing the normal as well as a recursive function code. That is stack is used for the uh, normal function that is a simple function as well as a recursive function calls. A stack is a LIFO. As I told you, uh, in computer system, a stack is a LIFO system. That is last in, first out data structure. That means the last item that is stored on the stack is the first item that is get out of the it. That is, uh, if I am storing the, if I am um, keeping the five books, the first book that I have uh, kept, that is a, or sorry, that the fifth book, that is the last book uh, that I stored that for example fifth book that fifth book will be picked up first that is a f uh, that is a last item that is stored is the first item or the first one to get out of it you can compare this to the stack of plates in a cafeteria the last plate that goes on the stack is the first one to get out of it if you are going in the, into the cafeteria so the last item that is stored uh, is the or the last item that is stored is the first item to be picked now let us see how the stack works in case of the following program This is the example that shows how stack will be maintained. There are uh, variable that is declared uses the add function. Then you uh, store the output of the function into the C that is variable C. Then prints the value of C. Then this is the definition of the add function uses two variable that is I and uh, J. Uses the sum function prints the value that is output into the sum then return the sum. When we return the sum, this will be returned over here, that output will be stored in the C and then uh, the value will be displayed. That is, the first item that is stored is the, or the last item that is stored is the first item to be picked up. 
how the values are being pushed and the pop up even uh, though we don't write a code to do this that is how the values will be stored in the uh, memory if we don't not have a push and the pop function simple the compiler and counted the function call would generate good uh, code to push parameter and the addresses then the compiler automatically inserts the function removes the function from the stack this is example there is an empty stack there is a when call to function uh, fun is met that is two values are copied then prints the value before transferring then uses the sum that is the sum will be stored and then while returning the sum will be fetched first that is on returning from this one so in simple terms stack is used whenever we use the leafo method that is last in first out that is the last item that is stored is the first item to be retrieved the recursive calls are more different whenever we make a recursive call the parameter and the returns address will get pu pushed on the stack the stack gets unwound when the control returns from the function or fun from the called function. Next topic is that uh, how to add the functions to the library. That is, uh, if I am a user, I am defined one function, that is a user defined function, then how to add that those functions or how to add any function to the library. What is the meaning of library? That can be used by anyone. So if I if I add one my function that is a itly function that is added in the library, so you can also use I can also use another person can person can also use that is a itly function. This is the concept how to add different function that is a user defined function into the library so that they become the standard function that is available for all the users. This is most of the times we either use the function that is present in the standard library or we defined our or function and use them can uh, we not add our function to the standard library and would it make any sense in doing so yeah we can add user defined function to the library this is the answer that is we can add our own function that is a user defined function to the library it makes sense in doing so as the function there are to be added to the library are first compiled and then added when we use these functions we can save them on their compilation time as they are available in the library in the compiled form. Now, let us now see how to add the user defined function to the library. Different compiler provide different capability to add delete. For example, Turbo C, C++. This is a compiler that is used that provides a utility called T, -I -R -T library that is a temporary library dot exe or the turbo library dot exe. For example, let us take the utility to add a function that is a factorial function to the library. This is the example. First of all, uh, the first step. These are the steps how to add the function to the library. The first step says write the function definition. That is first of all write the function definition. What is the content of the uh, factorial? Uh, write down the function definition of factorial in some file say fact.c. So first of all, uh, write down the definition of the factorial that is a fact dot c. Then uh, this is the factorial definition that is given. Then compile the fact dot uh, file using the alt f9. That is after writing the code, press the keys that is alt plus f9 for compilation a new file will be generated so whenever we compile as I told you a new file will be generated that is that have extension dot obj that is a object file so new file will be created that is a fact dot obj containing the compiled code in the machine language so this file that is a fact dot obj contains the file in the binary terms that is in the zeros and one terms why because we press the old f9 that is used for compilation that means converting the code into the binary language that is zeros and ones add the function to the library by issuing the command this is a command that is used to add the library this is tlib math.lib 
plus c fact object that means this uh, function that is the fact dot obj is added to the math dot library here math dot library is a library file name plus is a switch which means we want to add new function to library that is the this one is the path of the object file next part next step say declare the prototype of the factorial function in the header file say fact dot h this file should be included while calling the to use the function present inside the library create a program like this one this is the cfact.h main and this is the example then at last compile and execute the program using the control f9 so these are the various steps how to add the function to the library if we wish we can delete the existing function present in the library using the minus switch in the same way we are using the plus switch we can also use the minus switch to delete the library function instead of modifying the existing library we can create our own library that is we can create our own library in the uh, standard library let us see how to do this let us assume that we wish to create a library containing the function this one this one this one uh, Turbo C uh, provides various steps how to define the library of myself. Define the function, this one, this one, in a file say my function dot C. Do not define main in this file. Create the file and declare the prototype of this one like this one. First of all, factorial prime Fibonacci. So first type, uh, first point says define the functions and store them in the my fun CS dot C. Then second point says create a file myfuncs.h and declare the prototype. Next point says from the options menu select the menu item that is the application. From that dialog pop up the select the open uh, option that is the library and then press ok. D point says compile the program using the alt f9. This would create the library file that is the one dot library. So this, these are the steps uh, the library now stands created. So these are the steps how it could be done. So that's all for the topic, for the chapter. This is the summary. What is the summary? That is the crux of all the topic. To avoid the repetition, we use the function. Function declaration specifies the return type, type of parameter. Function definition defines the body of the function. Variable declared in the function are not available to other functions. Pointers are variable that stores the address of another variable. A function can be called either by value or either by reference. Pointer can be used to make a function return more than one value simultaneously. Recursion is difficult to understand but in most cases a better scope than the loop. Avoiding too many functions and calling them frequently may slow down the program execution. These are the various exercises that is used for the functions, for uh, passing the functions. Uh, these are the examples, these are the questions for you only. But I think you are not doing anything. No, that's not correct. These are the various answers, questions. These are the function prototype uh, questions. These are the various questions that is available for this one. This is the output based scenario, these are the questions, this is the object uh, programming questions. Then next is your data type revisited. That is what is a data type and how data type will be used. That is a tomorrow's topic. So that's all for today's session. Now if you have any doubts then please ask from me. I will answer you. In the tomorrow's class I will be starting with your next chapter that is chapter number 6 that is a data type. So let's stop over here. Uh, now if you have any doubts, then please clear the doubts from me. So thanks a lot everyone.